the downfall of the data engineer. Now the title of this video is clearly quite sensationalistic and the content a little bit pessimistic. And for those of you who have been in the data engineering field long enough, you might have realized that I just completely plagiarized that quote from Maxime's post from 2017 on an article with the same name as this video where he discussed the downfall of the data engineer. One thing I wanted to point out was this was again written in 2017, nearly five years ago, basically half a decade ago, when he also wrote a prior article called The Rise of the Data Engineer. And as we are currently in a upward trend where data engineering seems to be the hot new topic where everyone wants to either be one or understand exactly what it is, I think it's important to talk about some of the concerns people might have as they're either going into data engineering or have been data engineers for quite some time because these are unavoidable. For example, back in 2017, there was plenty of low code solutions out there, but there has definitely been a overall drastic improvement in the options that we have today, as well as just better connectors in terms of being able to just directly connect to most of the key data sources that we utilize on a day-to-day -day basis as data engineers, rather than having to custom code everything from scratch all the time. And so I think this has caused some people concern in terms of taking on data engineering as a possible career, because it might beg the question, Will we need data engineers in five or 10 years? And now personally, I think that the answer is yes. And for this video, I'm obviously gonna focus on the first half kind of more on the downfall subject. We're gonna kind of review uh, Maxime's article, kind of the things that he talked about back then, see what is still relevant today, and then talk about why I think, just like Maxime, I'm very much positive of where data engineering is going, just in terms of the fact that data is so large and becoming so complex that a lot of the tooling that is being developed that might automate some of our work away is actually a positive because it will allow us to be more impactful faster. So let's dive into this article. So before going any further and digging into this article, you should be asking a very important question, which is who in the world is Maxime and why am I even talking about him? Well, if you do a quick LinkedIn search, you will figure out that Maxime has played a major role across a ton of tech companies, including Facebook, Lyft, Airbnb. Uh, currently, he is the CEO at present, and he's done a ton of work in the open source data infrastructure world. Just take a moment to look at his LinkedIn and you will see exactly what I mean very quickly, or just find a few of the videos where he talks about, again, some of the stuff that he's done. He's got a ton of impact that he's played in your world as a data engineer. And I think it's great to kind of learn about who's out there that is really driving um, kind of the future of data. And so just scrolling through this article, you'll see where exactly where I kind of stole that first little bit from his post. But I wanted to point out some of the things that I think we're still dealing with today as data engineers, the same problems, the same situations, which to start out with is this boredom and context switching problem that I think a lot of uh, data engineers deal with, which is oftentimes we just have these giant data pipelines that we need to start and kick off. And then we, in order to be productive, kind of have to then switch to some other project or maybe interview someone or do some planning meetings. Now, this is not necessarily that different from maybe some other tech technical roles, especially maybe someone who's working in the data science field, if you're running some sort of model that takes a long time, but there does tend to be this role where we're constantly switching uh, what we're doing. We're trying to have a ton of plates spinning in the air, but I really do think that it can cause some form of annoyance. You know, you're trying to keep five or six jobs going, and then you have to go debug those five or six jobs. Maybe some of them run and end at the same time. Some of them don't, and it can be a little bit painful to context switch all the time. Um, I also do find that some people do get bored because there is this repetitive work in developing data pipelines where it can feel the same over and over again, whatever the overall structure of your pipeline might be. If you're doing the classic raw staging production uh, style, where it's kind of scraping from some source, doing some sort of transformation and then pushing it out to production, it can kind of feel the same after a while. So that can get a little bit boring for some people. And I've had plenty of conversations with people in the data engineering space at large tech companies who do find some portions of this boring. But again, I think there's some similarities there with maybe backend developers doing maybe CRUD work or something that's very repetitive and, you know, doesn't change that much over time. So although I agree with the sentiment of this section, I don't know if I'd say it's 100% avoidable regardless of the role you pick. Data scientist, software engineer, or maybe like a front end engineer, I think they all kind of have some similar component to it where you're going to be doing repetitive work or you're gonna to have to do some form of context switching. And now for the next point, um, I found this interesting because this is something I'm currently thinking about a lot, which is consensus seeking, but in particular, like trying to figure out what the right method is for design. It's such an interesting conversation to deal with in today's kind of modern cloud data warehouse infrastructure, because there's so many changes that you could make. You could run your ingestion using a lot of low code solutions, or you could try to go even more complex and run some things in Spark, or, you know, there's just so many options in terms of how you process your data and where you do the processing that I think that in itself is making it a little difficult to figure out, okay, where do I kind of 
stick my flag? Like, do I want to do mostly cloud data warehousing? Should everything just be done on like BigQuery, Redshift, Snowflake, or can we do some things in Postgres for some companies? I think there's a lot of discussion here on what the correct style is and even designing tables as we're now able to have wider tables where you're not necessarily doing as much data modeling for various reasons. One, you've got improved storage capacity, you've got improved processing, all of these different changes that really do play a major role in how we design our overall data data warehouse really plays this interesting role in like making me question, how do we move forward in this new kind of era where there are a lot of options in terms of how we design our overall end-to-end -end data solution. And so I think even finding that consensus among data engineers, you'll get tons of different answers on what the right solution is. And of course, to add to that, I think I love the fact that he pointed out conflicting nomenclature, just because there's so many terms that we kind of use interchangeably in the data engineering space or even BI space, you know, so many things get thrown around. I mean, I remember when I worked with, between Oracle and SQL Server, there was just so many terms that you would use. One place you'd use schema and it meant one thing, one place you'd use the term like database and it might mean something. And there were just sometimes different concepts altogether. There were or different kind of ways of tiering data. And so that can really become very confusing, especially if you're new to the industry and you're just trying to figure out what is the right way and you kind of start to figure out it's not necessarily clear even for people who have been working in the industry for a while because there's just so many options in terms of how you store data, how you manage it, how you even interact with it in terms of do you add the analytical layer in your tables? Do you do it in the data viz? Because some people like doing it in the data viz, especially if you're working with solutions like Tableau and Looker, they try to do a lot of the analytics later on versus I think some people prefer doing a lot of their kind of more analytical queries to create some form of data mart or something similar. So that in itself brings a, up a ton of questions. And so I think that's still a very valid point. Five years later is like, we're still trying to find consensus. And I think the point of me doing kind of this video is to show that things haven't changed as much as you think they would have. And we're still dealing with the exact same challenges we were five years ago now, and probably even prior to that, because at this point, Maxime had been working in the industry for long enough to see these points and write this article back then. So you know it had been happening for a while prior to that for him to get to this point. And then if you keep scrolling, he talks about change management, which I think is another kind of consistent problem that you'll run into as a data engineer. For example, to this day, I still deal with, you know, software engineers making a change upstream. Maybe they completely changed the version of Salesforce that now no longer has objects or specific columns that I was pulling from. And suddenly all my data pipelines break because no one told the data engineers because Honestly, at the same time, data engineers still have this weird second class citizenship when it comes to being a technical team member. And he actually even goes into that if you keep scrolling down, where he literally talks about the worst seat in the table, which is data engineers are just forced to play this role of middle child, right? Like we're not necessarily the oldest like software engineers um, where they've just been around and people uh, know what they do and they kind of like them. We're not the favorite, e.g. data science, where you know everyone loves them because they're the coolest and they're the youngest and they're hip and cool and, and everyone's talking about them and focused on them. And you get to data engineers and we're kind of just forced to deal with software engineers on one side and data scientists on another and just play this middle man between trying to get data from the applications to the data scientists and data analysts. Because at the end of the day, all business cares about is the impact that their insights can have. And that's usually driven by data scientists. So a lot of the weight gets put on data engineers to do all this work that one, never gets shown anywhere. And two, is just often the bottleneck. And so that's why I feel like a lot of data engineers feel like they're in this weird limbo in terms of they're kind of technical, but sometimes people don't really consider them software engineers. So they sometimes get paid less or they're given less respect. And this is a con constant problem that you'll deal with um, depending on the company you're working at because some people just do view it that way. And I'd like to say the reality is different, but I think that's captured here by Maxime where he even brings up that very point about sometimes salaries being less. Uh, actually, I figured out that it's actually uh, below where he brings up this point where he references real software engineers. Um, and yeah, so just kind of connected to the worst seat at the table, you kind of have this weird identity crisis that a lot of data engineers have where it's like, am I a software engineer? Am I more of an analyst? You know, sometimes I have a lower salary. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm expected to do uh, infrastructure and DevOps. Sometimes I'm just expected to do analytical work. And that's such a differentiation in work that if you start at a company expecting to do coding and you don't get it, companies shouldn't be surprised that maybe you quit or look for a different role. Because at the end of the day, I think a lot of us data engineers do like programming. Like we want to program infrastructure. We want to automate things. We like the data side of things, but we also like the whole automation process. We like thinking through and developing solutions and taking that away from us and giving us a lower salary because you think, well, software engineers drive more impact can be a little bit, one, frustrating, but two, a little demoralizing because it kind of, again, just gives us this weird identity crisis where we're like, okay, 
We're supposed to understand programming. You interviewed us for programming. And yet here we are, you know, making less or maybe not being treated as well as software engineers because we're viewed more as a cost rather than a benefit add that software engineers are. The next thing he pointed out is something that I think I constantly deal with, which is like operational creep. Again, data engineers are not just expected to kind of create new infrastructure and data. We're also expected to maintain the products that we've already developed or pipelines we've already worked on. And the way I've described this to other people, it's kind of like you finish one task or one pipeline. And what ends up always happening is there just ends up being two or three future tasks that all get focused around that one pipeline that you've just pushed out every probably month or two, you know, someone needs a new column, maybe someone changes something upstream, all of these various things that end up either breaking the pipeline or making you have to stop your current projects just to add this new field, whether that's because someone didn't think about it before, or maybe because it was never there in the first place, all of which slows you down because you're kind of expected to just do it. You're just expected to add it while you're taking on all of these other larger projects. And it just adds more to that context switching problem that we deal with, where we're constantly having to go back and make these small changes rapidly, you know, within like a day or a week while also still hitting our other deadlines. And it's more than a little frustrating for most data engineers. Now, that being said, I do think there is a little hope, which is things like low code solutions and other tooling that's meant to kind of simplify the end to end data pipeline that we're working on that a lot of people feel like is going to take away from the work that us data engineers do, I think will only help us be more impactful for companies by letting us do the work of maybe what is currently three, four data engineers with one data engineer. Only in terms of the fact that we no longer need to spend tons of time coding a Salesforce connector because all we need to do is click a few buttons and you know use something like Fivetran, Airbyte, something similar to use one of those connections that they have and easily pull that data in without having to spend too much time just to do the basic infrastructure, including things like automation, monitoring, logging, and all these other extra steps that we are unavoidably going to have to take on. And now we can focus more on other layers, like maybe something like the analytical layer where we're writing queries for cleaning up the data and processing it and running really complex data transformations that maybe the analysts shouldn't be handling because they should be focusing on answering questions and not trying to develop data infrastructure while increasing our ability to drive impact and hopefully reduce that view that we're just a cost and not actually a meaningful member of the data team, as well as arguably the tech team. And like Maxime five years ago, I, again, I just have hope that the data engineering role is going to continue to just improve over the next couple of years as we get to move away from hopefully some of this operational work or repetitive work, like creating repetitive connectors for things that we've either already connected to or something that's very similar. And hopefully also being looked at by companies as less of an expense and more of a value add factor uh, as someone who can actually manage and process and just develop data in such a way that all of their analysts can then be amplified rather than being stuck um, all the times. I think, you know, there is hope in this area. And so that's why, you know, I think for anyone who feels like, you know, maybe the data engineer is on the downfall, or maybe it's on the rise, or maybe someday in the future, low code is going to obliterate the need for data engineers. I don't think that is the case. And with the consulting I've been doing, I've been seeing plenty of companies that have 20, 30, maybe 40 uh, applications that they're all trying to pull data from where they may not even have a data engineer at the time. And them being able to utilize someone with the skill to actually know how to pull that data, manage it correctly, and develop it in such a way that anyone can then come and access it, use something like Tableau or some sort of BI tool to then analyze it. After you, the data engineer has set up basically all those automated processes very quickly because of all the options in terms of low code solutions. It really is becoming kind of a game changer for companies in that seven, eight figure range where before they may have not been able to afford either a data engineer full-time or maybe a data engineering team can now take advantage of these toolings while giving data engineers the ability to move away from doing operational work and focusing more on the impactful stuff like data transformation, uh, properly preparing data so that data scientists can just dive into it right away. I think that's where a lot of this is going in the next couple of years. I'm excited to kind of see this space. There's just so much that's changing day after day, you know, with new startups coming around and then the current ones just getting more funding and developing better features. And with that, I want to end this video, the downfall of the data engineer by saying thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time. Thanks and goodbye.